everybody. It's November 18th, 2011. I'm Sonic Sons, and I support Occupy Wall Street. I probably should have made a video about this earlier. This is one of the best things to happen in American politics in years. I don't, I don't know when the last thing this great was. I mean, obviously, the movement is still new, and we don't know where exactly it may lead. And, and yes, it's not perfect, but guys, come on. You find so many people, well, it seems like so many people anyway, focusing on the most negative aspects. Uh, you know, once in a while there's somebody who throws a trash can through a plate window and, you know, and does some vandalism or whatever. Like, okay, well, the vast majority of the protesters don't support that kind of crap. I mean, come on. <laughs> It's pretty obvious to tell. You can see hundreds of people standing around and uh, not destroying things, you know. Uh, people have criticized them for not having a consistent enough mes message. Well, gee, guys, maybe if you'd paid attention a little bit, you would know what the message was. Um, there's a lot of different things that you know individual protesters may be talking about, but in general, there's a few main points. Number one, the rich... The top 1% is, is the constantly like referred to, the 99% versus the 1%. The rich are not paying their fair share in taxes. All right? The rich have screwed up the whole system. <laughs> um, to some degree consciously and to some degree not even realizing it. That's the trouble with corruption is that some of it is actually unconscious sometimes. It, it's sometimes hard to tell. But over the last few decades, right, uh, real wages for most people, for the middle class and stuff, have not really gone up. Um, we've gotten more money, but we've, there's also been more inflation, and, and to the extent that we've had more of anything, it's because we've been on more credit and so forth. But getting back to the taxes bit, the rich pay less in taxes than we do. More specifically, they pay a lower percentage of their income in taxes than we do. Uh, this is caused, for instance, by the fact that um, most of us get our income through income, and the rich get most of their income through capital gains. Uh, and you'll see all sorts of misleading crap about this. Like, there's people talking about, oh, you know, almost half the country doesn't pay any income tax. Well, yes, that's true. Almost half the country doesn't pay the tax, which is called the income tax. But we still pay taxes on our income. We pay payroll taxes, which are not called income taxes for some reason, even though they are taxing your income. And we pay all sorts of other taxes that happen in the way. When it gets down to it, though, you really should read uh, Warren Buffett's article called Stop Coddling the Rich. He's a billionaire, Warren Buffett, and he talks about how he pays a smaller percentage in taxes than his cleaning lady. <laughs> do do the tr like, tricks and loopholes and stuff, and, and do the fact he makes a lot of capital gains, which are taxed at a much lower rate. There is no evidence, by the way, that uh, setting things up to be taxed in such a way and, and making things easier on the rich and so forth is actually helping the economy. That's a, um, uh, a claim you will often hear that, oh, well, basically we need to coddle the rich because otherwise we all suffer. And It's, it's not true. It's not true. You remember that old line um, uh, about making things easier on the rich? The line went... A rising tide lifts all boats. Sounds nice and poetic, doesn't it? Well, let me tell you something. A rising tide would lift all boats if we were all in the same ocean. But it seems rather that the rich people have gotten their boats into a gigantic private swimming pool, and they've got, like, this giant hose pumping the water out of the ocean and into the swimming pool, and they're going up and we're going down. <laughs> There's your counter metaphor. It is ridiculous that the rich get away with uh, such a low tax burden compared to the rest of America, right? Uh, it only makes sense, I think, that at the very least, the rich people should have to pay the same percentage in taxes as everybody else. And as a matter of fact, they should probably pay a greater percentage in taxes than everybody else, uh, which in some ways is what happens on paper, but in, in real life, it's not how it happens at all. Um, the system is rigged. So... That's demand. <laughs> Please unrig the system. Please set it back up so the rich pay at least the same percentage as us, uh, in, in terms of their income and, and their you know property and other things, um, and probably should pay more. Another part of the message is that big banks and other corporations have gotten away with massive, freaking massive criminality. Just Glenn Greenwald with liberty and justice for some. Glenn Greenwald, probably my favorite journalist. He's just amazing. Go read his blog and then get this book and so forth. Banks have committed absolute fraud. 
Like through the whole system, like not even like a few bad apples, like the whole system was just defrauding lots and lots of people. And they got away with it. Broke plenty of laws and no one's being prosecuted. Well, that's not fair. It's not fair they get away with that. We are protesting that. I haven't personally been down to the protests yet in, in my city, but I figure maybe I'll, I should go down there. Uh, I have them made donations. Uh, if you go to Fire Dog Lake, um, they have an Occupy Supply thing, and they're bu buying, like, propane tanks and stuff so the protesters can keep warm over the winter. And I was like, you know, that's the least I can do. I, I, yeah, I've got to help out with this. These, they, thank you, people. Protesting economic injustice, which is what we're protesting, by the way. And a lot of people would like to think that they're really just whining, right? <laughs> A lot of people were like, I saw some guy being interviewed on TV, and he's like, well, I think they should get a job. They would like to get a job, moron, but they can't because the economy sucks because the banks tanked it. I mean, yes, some of the, the financial crisis was caused by people taking out loans they couldn't afford, but at least that's an action of stupidity and not fraud. Banks committed actual fraud on massive scales. Read the freaking book. <laughs> Also, Matt Taibbi, if I pronounce it, T-A-I-B-B-I, -I, has written a lot about banks committing massive fraud and so forth. And look what they did to Jefferson County. It's crazy. Uh, that, that blog is on, on Rolling Stone. He's at a, the politics section of Rolling Stone. Um, and they get away with it, these banks. And it's crazy. And I'm so glad to have a protest movement that may have actually get the government to start serving the people again, but back about having a job. Right, so yeah, we can't find jobs, for one thing. <laughs> the, the, the market sucks out there. Um, and a friend of mine was saying, well, you know, I mean, there are other people, even in, in this market, that have been entrepreneurs, and they've gotten a business off the ground, and, and they've done everything from scratch, and they didn't need, you know, handouts or whatever. And I said, well, that's true, but here's the deal. It's like the whole playing field is tilted against you if you're the poor middle class. All right, when, when, when the rich are paying less than their fair share in taxes, and when big corporations can commit fraud in such a way that screws up the economy, and, and they get away with that fraud, you know, and, and the big executives get to have their millions and millions of dollars and their fancy mansions and yachts and crap, even though they've caused clear harm to millions of people, things are tilted against you. <laughs> the game is stacked against you. Now, if you work really hard, and if you're really clever, and if you do all these things, then yes, yes, you might succeed anyway. But it's not fair that the game was stacked against you to begin with. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's like, um, I don't know, if you're going to play um, some basketball or something, and then it turns out, oh, wait, um, the other team is five guys, and, and your team is just you. One versus five. That's not fair. Now, technically, if you were, like, freaking Michael Jordan or whatever, you could manage to win a one-on-five basketball game, you know? <laughs> um, but it's not fair that you, things were stacked against you to begin with. It is not fair, and it is perfectly reasonable to protest this lack of fairness. And that is the essential issue. It's not that the rich have too much money per se. That's not the central issue. The issue is that the rich have more money than they deserve. That they have lots and lots of money, but they haven't made lots and lots of a contribution to society. That's how capitalism is supposed to work, right? People working for mutual benefit. I make some neat service, and then you buy it, and I get some money, and you get a service or a product or whatever, and we both benefit. But when you have people that simply rig the tax code in their favor, that's not a benefit, you're just rigging the tax code. <laughs> that doesn't make the rest of us, like, happier or, or more productive or more prosperous. You just rigged the tax code. Also, when you get away with crimes, you've, you've rigged the justice system. That's not fair. That's not how this is supposed to work. What we're seeing right now is an absolute subversion of capitalism. I've heard, you know, crony capitalism is, is, is the term. Um... You know, and, and, and it's supposed to be another thing in capitalism. If you make a big mistake and your company goes down, then it goes down and it dies, you know? And, and that's some motivation for people not to make big mistakes. But when the banks made big mistakes and fraud, they got giant bailouts from the government. Now, I'll guarantee you that the TARP bailouts, per se, were paid back. But there's a lot of other ways they, they benefit. I mean, first off, even just getting a bailout that you have to pay back is still a, a, free, a great loan, you know? I would, a lot of us would like to have some loans to live on for a while. Secondly, there's things like, you know, 
uh, when the government bailed out AIG, I mean, you know, we're here, we are buying out this company, and we had plenty of leverage to say to AIG's creditors, hey, we're only going to pay you, like, you know, half of what was owed or a quarter or something, because otherwise we just won't bail out AIG at all. And instead we paid off, like, 100%, you know, which they wouldn't reasonably be expected to get. But the politicians are in the pocket of big business. <laughs> they are. Um, and the game is stacked against us. And it's not freaking fair. <laughs> Just keep coming back to that. The game is stacked. It's not freaking fair. And I'll tell you something. A lot of the people who have the most wealth and the most power dearly want to believe that it's fair. I, I, I find this meme, uh, or just thought you would call it, whatever you want to call it, um, around that, you know, oh, well, just, you know, the rich people, by definition, deserve their wealth. No, they don't. And I can, in this particular case, I can show you why not. You know, if, if, if the tax code was fair, and if all crimes were properly prosecuted and everything, then, yeah, I, I'm not sure I'd have a leg to stand on. I certainly have much less of a case. But the tax code is not fair, <laughs> and, and they are getting away with massive crime and fraud and crap. There was a freaking guy, I forget his name, um, he was a hedge fund manager who was driving his car, ran into a guy who was riding a bicycle, right? Caused serious mental, not physical harm to this guy. Uh, he had, whatever it was, um, go look it up. Um, and, and, then, and then drives away. It's a hit and run, which is a felony, right? Doesn't get prosecuted doesn't get prosecuted. Why? Well, the attorney of that era, district attorney or whatever, said something like, well, for a man in his position, um, you know, a felony charge could have really serious career consequences because he's a hedge manager. Right. Yeah! <laughs> That's how felony charges are supposed to work! They're supposed to have huge consequences! What the frick do you think we have a justice system for? <laughs> you know? And even if he, his, his consequences at his job would somehow be more than he deserved, he, 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 he deserves his felony charge. He just hit a guy with his car. I will grant that he agreed to pay restitution, but still, we are in a world where um, you, you, you can buy yourself out of a felony charge now. If you are a rich guy and you hit someone with your car, that's fine. You just give, you know, half a percentage of your yearly income and poof, you're gone. I don't know what a percentage was. It's probably not much, though, right? Um, if he's a hedge fund manager, and there's so much money in that. Um, someone should look up the actual statistics. Whatever. You pay, you know, a, a, a non-back-breaking amount of money, and you go on your merry way. Whereas, if a poor middle-class person hits somebody with their car, you probably go to jail, first off, and secondly, whatever money you'd have to pay is a freaking lot compared to how much you happen to have or earn. So, rich people get the license to just hit people with their cars. <laughs> oh, frick! Not that they're doing it on purpose, but still, you know, with liberty and justice for some, it's a book. <sighs> you know, it, it, it's just massively unfair. And these are serious issues. And yeah, that old idea that the rich deserve what they have. No, no they don't. No, they, not currently. Not most of them. You know, I'll get you some rich people probably, you know, invented really neat things. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Steve Jobs, for instance... Um, you know, it was clearly a visionary and, and came up with a lot of great ideas for Apple. At the same time, I wish Steve Jobs had been more generous in his life. I mean, come on, guy. you couldn't... J Bill Gates gave away so much money. Why couldn't you... Charity? Anybody? You get the idea of charity? Even people who say well, charity is like a handout or something. Well, how about you invent a charity that's not a handout? How about you give people jobs, you know? You offer up jobs to people that are willing to work, and therefore lazy people need not apply. Doesn't that make sense? Oftentimes you hear someone dismiss specific charities and then out of hand just dismiss the incredible concept of charity, but maybe I'm getting off topic a little bit there. Um, so yeah, there may be some people you know, who've done really great things and, and um, have earned at least a lot of money, and maybe all of the money that they currently have, I don't know. But a lot of other you guys, freaking not, they're being the executives that have... have, have, have driven the economy into the ground and driven their own banks into the ground or their own com companies and they get like you know multi-million dollar severance packages and they walk away scot-free and that doesn't make sense when the guy who's making the bad decisions that hurts not only like hit the, 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 the 
the world at large, but also the country, and also his individual company, and still gets rewarded for that? Something is seriously screwed up here, guys. That guy does not deserve it. And, and the Republicans have taken on this idea of always referring to rich people as job creators. Always, always, always they say that. They're not. By and large, or not to the, I mean, I guess we would like to find some more direct way of measuring this, but a lot of these people are freaking job destroyers. Job destroyers. And if I were on, like, Fox News or something and someone was like, well, I think, you know, we can't raise taxes on the job creators, I'd say, well, what about the job destroyers? How about we raise taxes on the job destroyers? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Or even just the people that are not even creating or destroying jobs, but they're sort of sitting on top of a giant pile of money that just keeps coming in, you know, to their investments or whatever, and and their special tax breaks and whatever. You know, GE paid like zero dollars in taxes the other year. Pretty sure it was GE, despite making billions of dollars in profits. You know, it. But they have so many loopholes in the tax system that they paid. They paid zero. They paid... You know, a lot of people are upset about the idea that corporations can count as people for in terms of campaign spending and so forth. You know, I don't think it's even the crux of the issue. Uh, the problem is not that corporations are people or not, uh, or that they may be considered people. The problem is that corporations are aristocrats. The problem is that corporations are so big and powerful that they are effectively above the law in many cases. That's the problem. If corporations were people, but people on the same level as the rest of us that have to play by the rules and do things fairly and contribute to society and, you know, pay back their fair share in taxes and all that crap, that would work. That that would that would probably I mean that would that would be at least much less objectionable than the situation we have right now. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I am so glad to have this protest movement. For all these economic injustices, um, I, w I would like to see it spread also to to freaking you know um, all the crap we've done in the war on terror and, and preventive detention and um, executive assassination, targeted killing stuff, and all these other terrible things we're doing all the time. Um, but heck, just that we're, we're protesting the economic side is, is itself a big issue, and it, it affects a lot of people. And I think the people who, who are mocking the protesters don't get it. Um, yeah, they're somewhat disheveled, but why should that matter? Yeah, there a couple windows got broken, but that's a very small minority of the whole group. Um, and, and, and by the way, I remember when the Tea Party was ascendant and uh, you'd, you'd see the pictures of you know the most racist signs they could find in the crowd. And... and I can, okay, I can see I, I can see that happen. So, um, and I think they were probably treated unfairly that way, weren't they? Right? I'm sure there's some races in the Tea Party, but probably not the majority. Not 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 to the degree you'd see in some of those signs, at least. Anyway, so what I'm saying is, don't judge any group by its most extreme elements. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're a little. Uh, the Occupy Wall Street people are a little disorganized. Um, a little, you know, message, little vague, maybe, but no, really, the, the important things are, are freaking obvious, really. <laughs> the, all the things I just listed, uh, and if they weren't obvious to you now, before, they are now. I just made this video. <laughs> you should be no, you should be informed now. You should have knowledge. I support Occupy Wall Street. And I dearly hope that this protest movement leads to some much-needed reforms. And I hope that you and all your friends get in on uh, at least the discussion. Even if you're not going to be part of the protest, or you have some disagreements with specific parts of the protest, be part of the discussion about all the issues I just brought up here. we got to do something about that. Not even just in America, but there are similar things in other countries. But I think America is particularly bad at the moment. We really need this protest movement, and I'm glad it exists, and I hope it leads to big, positive changes. Thanks for watching. See you later.